40. Calculate the delta G notch for each of the following reactions from the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. So we have COO solid plus carbon monoxide gas will give us cobalt solid plus carbon dioxide gas. They give us a temperature of 550 degrees Celsius and a Kp of 4.90 times 10 to the second. Okay, now we're trying to find that Gibbs free energy, the delta G, and they give me an equilibrium constant. There's only one formula that ties the two together, just two different variations of it. In this case, we're solving for the delta G, so it would be easiest to just memorize the formula in which it's delta G equals, and that's this formula right here. Delta G equals negative RT ln of K. There's your equilibrium constant. Now, specifically in this, in this question, we're using Kp. But to be honest, it doesn't matter what K value you use. It just has to be an equilibrium constant. Ka, Kb, Kc, Kd. Just kidding. Actually, actually, there is a Kd, dissociation constant. Is there a Ke? No, but there's a Keq. There's a Kf. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. So in this case, our K value is 4.90 times 10 to the second. Let's just find out what those the R value and the T value is. Now the R value for this equation is the standard 8.314. Units, if you're using 8.314, is joules per mole times Kelvin. So if we're using Kelvin here, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. The first thing we got to do is we have to convert the Celsius into Kelvin. Plus 273, or more specifically, plus 273.15. So that's what I'll do. I'll take the 550 and plus 273.15. And I get 823. 823.15, and that's Kelvin. That's the number that's going into here. Everything is accounted for, so let's just plug it in. Delta G equals the negative is in the equation already. So it's the negative 8.314 times the 823.15. And now we have the ln of 4.90 times 10 to the second. Good thing about using the TI-84 or any TI right, the calculator, the Texas instrument, the, uh, the graphing calculator, is that you could plug this in into one shot and the calculator will understand what functions to do at what time. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Delta G equals negative 8.314 times, I'm gonna pull that number down, decreases the amount of error, and then I'm gonna say times by the ln, right, that's the natural log, of 4.90. Now, I see that this is scientific notation times 10 to the, I don't like to write times 10 to the, I like to use the EE button. If I say second comma and that E comes up, this means 4.90 times 10 to the, and then you just gotta put the exponent, two. If you do it that way, the calculator will always group together that exponent, the uh, scientific notation. And you won't have any discrepancies in your answers. And press enter, there we go. I get a big number. Well, actually, a really, really small number, right? Because it's negative. So negative 42392. So 42,392. And we'll just call it that, right? Joules per mole. But since this is a really, really small number, we like to just convert it into kilojoules, right? Generally speaking, delta Gs are in kilojoule per mole. So to go from joules to kilojoules, all we got to do is just divide by 1,000 or move the decimal over to the left three times. And now we have the kilojoule answer and we're going to use the correct number of sig figs. A lot of sig figs in my uh, Kelvin, but only three in my equilibrium constant. So I'm just going to use three sig figs. So it'd be negative 42.4 because the nine rounds a three up to a four. And we are done. Spontaneous, it's a negative value. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. That's all for this one. Hang tight, because I think there's a couple more on this number. Um, but yeah, I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.